Hey guys, it is Matt with SCNS Live and Cinelinks.com and I just got out of the screener for Suicide Squad, arguably the most anticipated movie of 2016, mainly because of the star-studded cast and because it is DC and after everything that happened with Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, everybody wants to know if this can kind of right the ship, can they kind of get out of the darkness and be more, you know, lighthearted and funny and everything like that. And that what's, that's what Suicide Squad is supposed to be. So, let's go into the overall plot line of the movie. The whole thing starts off with them introducing each character and how they got caught and all this other stuff and Viola Davis as Amanda Waller trying to explain why that this need, this team needs to happen and this team needs to be made and you know all the while throughout the movie you get little like flashbacks where it goes into why they are who they are you know why they're damaged goods how it happened to them what's going on and it ultimately leads up to them becoming forming a team and fighting the big bad. Now, many would suggest at that point that that would be Jared Leto's Joker, right? Because we've seen it. He's been in all the previews, all the trailers, everything. It's Jared Leto's Joker. Maybe, you know, pause a little bit on that. Be, pump the brakes there. Because Jared Leto's Joker is mainly a subplot of this entire film. He's just a character to kind of flesh out Harley Quinn a little bit more. If anything, it's just an added bonus, really, I guess. Like, it's, it, you could have taken him out of the movie and it wouldn't really have changed anything. In fact, it could have just made you get to the end a, lot, a little bit quicker. So, he, as far as him as the character, I think he did a great job. I think it's a great Joker. I love the dynamic between him and Harley Quinn. I thought their chemistry was pretty good. Uh, there are references to the old comics, so as anybody who's a Harley Quinn fan who got really upset about, you know, the booty shorts and everything like that, you do get some reference to the actually Harlequin, Harley Quinn. So, uh, and they, they do her backstory justice, so, you know, I know that's an important character, you need to know that. Uh, as far as other characters that are in this film, uh, my favorite, uh, it's Will Smith, Deadshot. I thought he did a great job. He was so good in this film, and he really tied it all together as that leader, but yet not a leader in this ensemble. And I think that's where he really shines. I think Will Smith really shines when he's in an ensemble, and he can kind of bounce things off of other people. There were other times where I thought he was a little forced, and it didn't work out as well as what he was trying to do. Like I, There was one part where he's talking to Flag, Joel Kinnaman, who I thought did a great job as well. Uh, he went over and he, there's like a, a serious moment. He goes over and just starts talking to him. And the, what he's talking about doesn't have anything to do with the situation that's going on. If anything, it's just a pride moment. And it didn't make sense. It had no place. It could have been later in the film, what have you. It doesn't matter. So the whole movie uh, in general, as far as the characters were concerned, I thought they did a great job. But there were some that could that were just felt forced. They felt inserted. Like that... They didn't necessarily need to be in there. We already spoke about Joker, but Killer Croc, first half of the movie, there's barely any reason. He's just that, I'm a grimacing face, you know? Yeah, it wasn't until the second half of the movie that he actually starts having good lines. He starts actually being in the action and doing more like that. Diablo, fantastic character. I love what they did with him. They went into his backstory. They dove deep into it. And, you know, he became kind of a star of the movie. Uh, you know, there's other characters like Captain Boomerang, who I thought did a great job. There's a couple of cameos in the movie. We already knew that Ben Affleck was going to be in it. He does an awesome job, as always, as Ben Affleck as Batman. I mean, what can you really ask for? He was the best part of Batman v Superman. And he's one of the best parts of Suicide Squad, despite the fact that you could probably say he's got, like, three minutes in this film. You know? So, uh, there's all that. Uh, Enchantress is okay. You know, I, I wasn't a huge fan of it. Especially due to the fact that, you know, she's supposed to be this all-powerful character. And she felt muted. And, and that was kind of my main issue with the entire film in general. Was the fact that you got that stereotypical bad guy. You know, in the background. 
you know, causing damage to this entire city, but really all they're doing is trying to build one, like, super mega death ray to destroy the world. And for me, I, I was over it. I'm like, this bad guy has all these powers and is so strong, and yet they're not doing anything. Like, I felt like at any point in time, if they really thought about it, they could have just killed everybody, and then that would have been the end of the movie. But that's not what they did. Uh, you know, I think... As far as an overall outlook of the movie, while yes, it's got a lot of plot holes and it's got some issues as far as, you know, continuity and, you know, being a stereotypical film and, you know, trying to be funny when it doesn't need to be and being cheesy at times, uh, it's still a good movie. It's still fun. It's action-packed. I actually enjoyed it very much. You know, being uh, having to view it through a critic's eye, you have to catch these little nuances and little issues here and there, and you have to be nitpicky. Like, at one point, I was telling my wife that I thought that the music was unnecessary. But really, I mean, that's, that's me being nitpicky at that point. Overall, I think if you really look at it as a fun DC movie, you will get just that. Don't get your hopes up to it being like the movie that will define the DC cinematic universe. It's not that. It's a fun movie that I actually do hope that they make another one of. I would love to see the whole group come back together and they actually leave it open to another movie actually happening. So we'll see if it ends up happening and I'm sure the money is really what's gonna tie it all together as you know if they're gonna pull off a sequel or not. But I personally would hope that they would and I think it's going to tie into the rest of the DC Cinematic Universe because there's way too much destruction and damage. It's almost Zack Snyder style in a way. Like, just think about that for a moment. Like, not quite there, but it's almost there. They get close. So, uh, also, uh, mid credit scene. Wait for that. It's a cool exchange. Uh, I, you know, I won't... I'll keep it there. It's a cool exchange. Watch that and uh, let us know what you think. Put it in the comment section what you thought about Suicide Squad and let us know your review. Give us your rating system, whatever you have. Give us a Jeeva score, like our boy BC, all right? And uh, don't forget, keep it on Cinelinks.com for all your news, reviews, editorials, and more. And keep an eye out for our official Cinelinks review. We'll catch you next time. Thanks. Hey guys, thanks for watching that video. If you liked what you see, you can go click right here to watch our news content. Or maybe some reviews over here. And if you want to get notifications on more, be sure to click that subscribe button. And subscribing has no adverse side effects. Yet. <laughs> but we'll catch you next time, guys. Keep, Keep on, on nerding. nerding.